Today I want to do a tutorial. I know I don't normally do a lot of tutorials, but today I wanted to because I have a pattern coming out soon. Um, it's my Swancho pattern that I've been working on, and it has a technique in it that I have trouble finding online. So I thought I'd do a tutorial for all my pineapple peoples. And today's tutorial, as you could see in the name of this, is in a, ply, a crocheted applied eye cord border. Um, it's really simple once you get used to it. You only need a couple of things. It's totally easy to do. <laughs> Sorry if there's a lot of noise. Dogs running around like crazy. Anyways, really simple. Um, it is a little tedious, but you'll get it. And working it in the round and working a square, you pretty much end the same way, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to show you a technique today on a little tiny swatch, okay? So let's get to the tutorial. Okay, so for this tutorial, I just made up a little granny square as if it was a blanket. Um, I will say if you're using a contrasting color like I am here, so I did my little blanket in green and then my eye cord I want to be in blue I do suggest doing an entire row of single crochet around it just makes your eye cord look a little cleaner and nicer when you're all finished but so I did all the way around I slip stitched into the first one and that's where we're gonna pick so what you're gonna need is obviously a crochet hook mine happens to be a 5.5 because I wanted a nice big hook to show you guys the stitches really well but it's all dependent upon your project it can be worked with any hook and then you're going to need something pointy. I've got a tiny knitting needle here. Well, it's not really tiny. It's kind of long. I wish it was a little shorter, but you need something kind of pointy to help get some stitches off of the hook, okay? Just put that there. All right. So what we do, sorry, get it back in focus here. To start, all you do is chain three. One, two, three. So there's my chain three, and I'm gonna go into the second chain from the hook, so one, two. Just gonna go into that second chain and pull up a loop, okay? Then I'm gonna go into the third chain and pull up a loop. So now I have three loops on my hook. Get your little, I have a knitting needle, whatever you're using, slip off the first two stitches. Oops, sorry gets a little tricky sometimes and you will get into kind of a rhythm of how to do this let me get this all picked up there we go okay so I have two on this and one on this and what we want to do is slip stitch this first one the reason that you have your stitches on this hook you could do it without it but it just holds your stitches because as you see the yarns coming from way over here and if we pull on it it might pull this stitch right out so so just slip stitch stitch one Okay, easy. Now go back and take and put a stitch back on your hook. Mine's being a little on the difficult side, sorry. Okay, slide it right out of there. I'll, I'm gonna just tuck this to the back so you can see now. So now I have the second one on my crochet hook. I do the same thing, I just slip stitch it. Okay, now put your third hoop back on your hook. I'll set that down for this. And now here's where we're going to connect it to the border. Instead of just slip stitching this one, we're going to go into the next stitch, pull up, and then slip stitch right through the third one. And that is your first, first one. So, oh, and please ignore this little cut on my hand here. It's healing nicely. I had a little run in with a rotary cutter, but I'm fine now. So now, back to the tutorial, we just go on to the next stitch and we do the same thing. We take two stitches off, let it out. I kind of like to just let it drape there. You chain or slip stitch that first one. Oops, sometimes it gets a little. You really do get into a rhythm as you're doing it. The first couple of ones feel a little funny. So again, just slip stitch that second one. Put the third one back on there. Go into the next stitch. Let me drop that for a second. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the third one. And you're going to start noticing it. It will, as you go, start curling over. And that's it. That's pretty much what you do. I'll do it one more time like this, and then I'm going to show you what to do at the corners. Um, and like I said, as you get going, the first couple of stitches are always a little on the awkward side. And then by the time you're done with your project, you... You're holding both tools in your hands and it's just working out right. So I just 
take those off my hook. I slip stitch the first one. I pick up the second one, take it off that. Slip stitch the second one. Pick up the third. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through the third. And see, now it's starting to make this little kind of cord thingy. And as we go, it's going to roll over and give you this really cool, interesting edge. So, one more time, just to make sure I'm showing this properly. Just take off two stitches. Slip stitch the first one. Put stitch number two back on there. Slip stitch number two. Put number three on. Go into your next stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, and then pull through number three. And that's that. It looks really beautiful when you're finished. Gives you this kind of plump, squishy border. Now, I am... Well, I guess I'll just keep doing it here because I'm really close to my corner and I want to show you the corner. And instead of stopping, we'll just go ahead and do it. So, again, just slide them off. Slip stitch. Put one back on. Or um, stitch number two. Slip stitch. Oh, I'm right out of camera. I'm so sorry. Put number three on. Into the next stitch. Pull through. Pull through number three. Do you guys see how simple this is? I know it's a little clumsy having um, the extra tool in your hand for us crocheters, but it's not that bad. Just slip stitch one, put two back on, slip stitch number two, put three on, go into that next stitch, pull through, and pull through number three. See how cool this border is starting to look now? It makes a gorgeous border on sweaters, on blankets, on everything. It gets just this plump, squishy border that looks really cool from both sides. Okay, let's see. All right, I have made it to my corner. Sorry, it took me a second there. And you will notice I have three stitches, one, two, three, in my corner. And so what you want to do, and it just means find that middle stitch, which happens to be this one. So do your first, or do your stitches up to that middle stitch, just like you've been doing everything else. Slip these two off. Slip stitch one. Put number two back on. Slip stitch number two. Sorry for the heater kicking on. Put number three on, go into that stitch, pull up the loop, and slip right through that. Okay, now we are officially at our corner, and to turn the corner is super simple. Basically, we do the same thing, take two stitches off, slip stitch number one, put number two on there. Slip stitch number two, put number three on there, and here's where it's different. Instead of going into this stitch, we're just going to slip stitch number three. That gives you this kind of squishy area to turn the corner. And so then for the next stitch, we go back to the normal. Take two off, slip stitch one, put number two back on. And like I said, you will get the hang of this. It will get a little easier. Slip stitch. Put number three on. Ooh, my number three got a little tight. There we go. Make it a little bigger here. Put number three on. And now remember, you skipped this corner one. Go into that next one. Pull up. And then go through number three. And you will see as you get going, it's going to just give this little corner just a little area to turn is all it's going to do. It's really, really simple. Oh, I've got a little thread kind of messed up. Mm. That's okay. But the I-cord border looks really, really cute. So I am going to continue all the way around, and then I will show you what to do at the end. Okay, so I have made it all the way around. 
it looks super cute even on the back so it's completely like reversible this makes a wonderful border for baby blankets it's real soft and really squishy and gives you kind of like a texture to it having that kind of raised border and okay I'm all the way back here to the end and all I'm gonna do is slip stitch through all three of them and then tie off basically and I'm going to cut my yarn here Leave yourself a, oh, sorry. That was a really up close of my manicure. Hope you guys liked it. Leave yourself a nice long tail because what you're going to do now is all you're going to do is take your, sorry, tapestry needle and you're just going to join these together. You'll just sew them together and if you do a very good job, you won't even notice it. So let's give that a shot really quick here. I always just try to line it up here, my stitches, and just kind of go through one side and give it a little tug, see if it lined up really good. It did. And now I don't like to go over. I kind of like to go back and forth to keep it looking kind of smooth. I just go through different stitches every time and just kind of give it as smooth of a join as I possibly can. I mean, it is a join. It is what it is. So I'm going to go back through one more time. Right through there. Okay. Give it a nice little join there. And as you can tell, it looks pretty good. Probably could have done a little neater of a job. But for this tutorial, it's cute. And now when you're working in the round, um, it's the same thing. You just don't have to worry about the corner. You just keep going around. I think this looks super, super cute. And I love it. I think it would make an adorable baby blanket. And obviously, I thought it made a great border for a sweater. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was easy to follow. And I hope you give it a shot. It's tons of fun. Okay, so as you can see, it's fairly simple to do. A little clumsy at first, but once you get going, it really is quick. And it's much easier to do when you're not trying to film it on camera. Um, as you can see, it gives this adorable little border. Let's see if I can get it to focus you guys know how the cameras are this is actually the back side of it we'll flip it around isn't that cute so 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 adorable love it i absolutely love the i-cord border i think it makes a little baby blanket a little extra squishy on the corners and it's cute and i will give you a little sneak peek here i used it on my swan show pattern that will be coming out very soon and let's see if i can give you I'll look at that. Let's see. I gotta cover my face. First, I gotta get it to focus. There we go. See? It was beautiful. I used a smaller hook so it, it wasn't quite as big and plumpy, which is exactly what I wanted. But look at how beautiful that I cord border looks on the end of this. It just gives it a polished finish without adding any sort of I'm trying to cover my face again, frilliness to it. It's very, very pretty. I absolutely love it. And I will be using it in more designs. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys. And I guess I'll talk to you guys later.